So here we are. And the job is to cut away this piece of material that we left here at about a 25 degree angle and kind of follow what we have already because this should be about right for the tool. Uh, let me point out the difficulty that we're going to experience, that everyone will experience with this kind of arrangement. So, that, you know, the nice thing about this is that you could take a nice wide shaving from here to here, but because the bottom is curved, the only way that that's going to happen is <laughs> if the blade is exactly the correct shape uh, relative to the bottom of the sole, which we think we have here from when we did our original rough grinding the other day. There's a couple of ways to, to, to try and get this. One is to just put a piece of sandpaper on something flat and just hold it by hand and just do that and maybe hope to get lucky with that. That's not too bad. Now here's a way that we might try it. This is a kind of fussy, overcomplicated tool from Bridge City Toolworks, which everything they make is <laughs> seems fussy and overcomplicated. But anyhow, we'll see if this can uh, maybe help us. I don't know. We'll find out. Find out if this is going to help. Well, gosh, that looked pretty good. Look at that. So that's, I think that's pretty good. So why don't we try and keep doing that? until we get a, a serious burr on the back side that we can we can depend that we've gotten the whole edge honed okay not too far away so we're rocking it and the shape of the tool that we have is helping me to maintain the shape Maybe we'll go for a little coarser cut. Okay, so just basically sweeping it through this arc and we can see when we look at it that we're doing a good job. Looks like it's coming out fine. And this is probably the most accurate way to try and keep it the right shape. Okay. <laughs> Just a little more work to do. So if this works well, it means that the tool will be able to cut all the way across the width of the blade and give about the same thickness of cut all the way across. That's what we're going to aim for. You can see the limitations of my 
cockamamie setup here. But it is working. And then of course, this is revealing the inconsistencies of my grinding, but that's okay. All right, so I think now we're gonna go to, well, we'll polish this and then we'll go to the uh, felt lap and get a beautiful polished edge. I'll just take a little, some of those 320 grit marks out with this paper, which is 1200. Okay, looking good. This thing actually worked. It was helpful. And uh, now we'll go over to the lapping machine. Well, I guess first I'll just break off the burr on the back side because that was kind of nasty. All right. Well, I can see that I have failed to, uh, it's a little hard to see before, I failed to take away all of this edge. It's, it's fine over here, but over here I have a little bit more cutting to do, so I've got to set this back up. Those are working better. Okay, two twenty paper.
Okay. Okay, well, we'll put it together and see what we can do. Here's our first try at assembly. We'll see what happens. I already put um, some paraffin on these screws, which is a appropriate lubricant, you know, dry lubricant. And then this is the cap or clamp. And this is one of the old ones that is cast. And I don't know if you'll get one of these, but it's nice because this edge is nice and straight and it's not deformed. I think we took a look at these before. The the new kind are made in a punch press and they're not they're not very well done. So and then here's another refinement. This screw is something I provided and I drilled out and tapped this whole quarter twenty eight, which is a a fine thread fastener, and I also put a little dome on the head of the screw so that it doesn't, you know, just so that it's nice. Let's just see if this all fits. Hmm, it's pretty good. Okay. So, of course, one of the big strengths of this tool is that you have two very simple adjusters. That help you position the blade beautifully. All right, so we're we're set up for a test cut and we'll get that together. Okay, so here I was all ready to test this and show you how it cuts, but I, I realized that I forgot to abbreviate the handles. When you're using the spoke shave here or here, the handle gets in the way and is a problem. So the next thing we're going to do is mark and cut off the handles. We're going to do this off camera. I trust that you guys have have um, hacksaws and you can chop them off. So here it is just a little bit short of the holes that are in the handle right now. We're going to just cut off this piece of cast iron and brand them over on the belt sander or file whatever you have. So I'll have fun with that. See you in a minute. So here we have uh, 19... 74 and uh, here, gosh, a long time later. So here we are. And the differences are we can see this is a different screw, right? Here's the original screw. That's no big deal. And I, 
I uh, I curved this one to try and get out of the way of the shavings. Looks like I curved it more than I needed to. And we don't know what the throat opening is going to be like for this tool yet. So we're going to have to explore. It might be too constrictive. And we'll have to, we'll have to see. So there's the first cut and obviously the chips are not getting stuck so that's okay. Let's see what happens. Well, let's see. So these chips are 0.17 millimeters or seven thousandths of an inch, which is, well, probably the biggest chip we could get to come through there because I think, isn't that what we aimed? I think that's what we aimed at was a seven thousandths throat opening. So that's kind of cool. That's a big chip. Now we'll see if we can back it off a little bit. First of all, we're seeing a beautiful surface. Of course, no chattering whatsoever. So this is four thousandths about, so that's, you know, a little smaller chip. Now we can see that it's cutting on that side. It's cutting on this side, so it means that it means I did a pretty good job of following the shape of the bottom of the tool with the iron. All right, now it's possible that this would work better if there was a little bit less friction in the for the chip although I'm, it's really working great <laughs> okay so i guess they are getting stuck a little bit in there and we, let's have a look at that and see if we can analyze whether that is, could be a problem or might maybe already is a problem all right so if we look in here we're going to see, of course, this is the whole point, that so we have this nice surface that's parallel to and a very short distance from the top surface of the blade. But you see it's quite wide. And that may be uh, a problem for little shavings getting stuck in there. Uh, in other words, just having some friction in between the front of the throat and this other part in the back here, where this is a, you know, a long piece of material that the chip has to travel over in order to get released. And so what we could do, you know, is go in there with some kind of tool. Of course, I would always try my pocket knife first. And uh, there's a little cut. Anyway, we could try and reduce it. I'm kind of teasing about the pocket knife, but you get my idea. Anything that goes in there and cuts it, and certainly we wouldn't want to cut too much, and we certainly don't want to cut this last stripe of material here at the end, because that's, that's what this whole project was about, was to fill in the gap. and allow the uh, sole to be pressing right on the material before it gets cut. And I think if we look over here, we can see that it really is a, making a beautiful surface. Look at this here, awesome. Yeah, let me, let me go ahead and play with this. I'm gonna use a file 
to uh, reduce this surface from the inside. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put it back in the vise with a plastic holder. And I'll mark the surface with magic marker so that I can make sure I stay away from the front edge. And I'm going to reduce that land from this side so that it, uh, it, it ends up being a smaller, smaller piece of material. It has to be a really thin file, huh? Bumping into the vice a little bit. So this is working pretty well. I can see what I'm doing. Of course this little file isn't cutting very quickly, but that's okay. I don't have a lot of material to remove. I'm not exactly sure how big a disadvantage this is, but it did seem like the little chips were were uh, piling up in there. Interesting that it was passing the big chips better than the little chips. Okay, so we've got this down to about, oh, I don't know, a millimeter and a half or something like that, sixteenth of an inch. Maybe we'll see how that works for us.
Okay. I guess it's set a little bit too coarse on the one side. But, you know, again, so convenient to adjust. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Might be a little fitting and tuning still to go, but man, this is a pretty great tool. I'm very happy with this. And you can see what an awfully nice surface we're able to get with this. This is real woodworking. This is the deep end of the pool. This is a real improvement to a spoke shave. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you can tune up your own tools and get them to work the way you want them to.